it's just stunning those apps and, and, and the information that we the, the new things that are coming out that are really well intended but that are doing harm and it's so important for us to pay attention to those and to be involved and take action and have a voice to pass free and to contact Mrs. Obama and make sure that um, as this initiative is moving forward that we have a voice in that and we make sure that this very well intended program to address the issue of obesity does not do harm. So thank you very much. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing another very, very dear friend of mine um, that also would, I think, subscribe to the Talk Less, Do More. Um, <laughs> Shavise Turner has been a, a, an amazing champion in the eating disorder community, um, bridging the um, bridging between the whole spectrum of eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, and compulsive overeating. And I remember meeting Shavise at an EDC event, oh, several years ago, and getting to know her and having rich, wonderful conversations about the importance of bridging that gap. And honestly, I came into it because my daughter suffered from anorexia, and that's what I knew most about, and that's what I understood. And over the years, and, and much, um, to the credit of Chavez, I've learned a great deal more and understand the importance of bridging that gap. So, um, Chavez is going to talk to us today. Um, Chavez, sorry, I forgot to talk about Vida, um, is the founder and the CEO of the Binge Eating Disorders Association, based here in Washington, D.C., does a lot of wonderful work um, on, on addressing the obesity issues. Her talk today is bridging, bridging, bringing <laughs> It's been a long day. <laughs> Bringing binge eating disorder into the light, a personal perspective. Thank you, Kitty. Standing before you today, it is effortless for me to acknowledge that I have binge eating disorder. After years of silent shame, I now embrace the disorder and our journey together. It wasn't always this way. Sometime between the ages of five and seven, I discovered the power of food. I discovered I wanted more of it than most everyone else, and it seemed to preoccupy much of my time. Food for most of my life provided me with both comfort and anxiety. It signified love and hate. It brought me up and then down. It was my best friend and my worst enemy. My mom was anorexic as a teen, and as a young mother, she coached me to distinguish between good and bad food and taught me the many rules and rituals she followed. Mom modeled her own uneasiness with her body, and we dieted together often. We were both acting on impulses that are difficult to imagine any other human experiencing. I admired my mother as she was able to restrict with such determination, and I found myself weak in her eyes. I caved over and over again to frenzied feasts of as much food as my poor body could handle. Binges were never pleasant. Planning a binge was physically painful as my mind raced and body shook. I could not eat fast enough and post-binge, I felt anger, frustration, shame, and guilt. I overheard many conversations between my parents about food missing from the refrigerator or a new stash of wrappers in my room. They tried everything they knew to help me stop gaining weight, but the series of doctors, weight loss programs, and imposed diets only served to drive me deeper into the arms of food and self imposed seclusion. I was teased and bullied about my weight through elementary, middle, and high school. Despite being popular and well-liked by my peers and teachers, I was an easy target because I was overweight. I just knew that if I was thin, I would disarm the bullies and my parents would be free of worry. The pressure I put on myself and the hours I spent focusing on how to get thin fueled more binges 
and so the cycle of extreme dieting and binging continued. I even attempted purging and other bulimic behaviors, but found that I was unable to commit to these activities. In my mind, this signified that I was truly a failure. The teasing and bullying played havoc with my self-esteem. My only solace was food, and I further retreated from friends and family, ashamed of my growing body. As my weight continued to increase through my childhood and into adolescence, I spent years trying to fit in by engaging in risky behaviors while binging on food, alcohol, and to some extent drugs. Food was always the preferred substance, and I planned each binge I could, but was always open to the spontaneous consumption of whatever was available. During my late teens and early 20s, I realized that all my friends and high school classmates were going on to college and building their lives. I attempted twice to attend college and found that I could not handle the pressure that came with the demands of a higher education. My eating disorder required more and more time which left fewer and fewer hours in the day available for building an adult life. I struggled for several more years as my mental health deteriorated and my waistline expanded. I was in the depths of despair and depression with no future and even less sense of self. I knew I needed help and that it meant a commitment to searching for answers. I was not very hopeful, but willing to try anything. Finally, with the help of a therapist, I took a first step and began to work on the underlying issues related to my overeating. At the time, binge eating disorder was not mentioned as a diagnosis, and I was confused about whether I had an eating disorder or a lack of willpower. However, this initial work provided me with an improved outlook on life and tools that I could take with me. I attended college, earned my degree, and began engaging in life, despite the fact that binge eating remained a big part of that life. I knew that I had not fully addressed what was going on and would need additional help. After several years, I once again saw treatment. My new therapist diagnosed me with binge eating disorder. I cannot convey the liberation I felt. The distress and preoccupation with food had a name. I realized that this is difficult to believe, but I was overjoyed. It meant I was not alone, and there were others who were struggling. I, it also meant for me that I could address my issues without guilt and shame. Responsibility for the disorder now belonged to me, and I felt relief. I began to search for other binge eaters through both national and local eating disorder groups. I occasionally found one or two, but it soon became apparent that either I was one of very few or that this disorder was severely underdiagnosed and discussed. I was certain that it was the latter, and I began to think about what it would be like to have a supportive community of those with binge eating disorder. At the time, I had no idea how this unmet need in the eating disorder community would directly affect the direction of my life. Over the next 10 years, I married a wonderful and supportive man and had two children. Sorry, I knew I was going to joke up here. <laughs> you know, they say that eating, uh, um, getting past eating disorders is really about relationships. It's true. <laughs> um, so anyway, I married this great guy. <laughs> <laughs> severe depression and relapse, I opted for lap band surgery. Still convinced on some level that my lingering issues would be solved if I were thin. But even though I thought this, I knew on an intellectual level that that was not true. The day after I returned home from the hospital, I began to have serious withdrawal symptoms. I obsessed about food, cried, screamed, and became even more depressed. I couldn't believe that after all of these years of therapy and self-discovery, food could still control me like this. 
It was clear that this band around my stomach was not going to solve my problems, and I would need to revisit my treatment for binge eating disorder. I assembled my team to include a psychologist, nutritionist, and several complementary practitioners who helped me manage anxiety through massage, acupuncture, and exercise. I was introduced to intuitive eating and found this tool to be transformative as I addressed my issues. For the first time, I felt I was treating my body well and my mind and spirit approved. This said, there are times when, even now, I binge. Although the definition of a binge is much, much different for me than it was years ago, I am able to recognize the warning signs and adjust accordingly. I am patient with myself as I know I cannot possibly be perfect and that one binge does not mean that I have failed miserably and therefore just, justify another. Today, I allow my imperfections in all their beauty and embrace my body at every size along the way. I continue to explore what works for me and have learned to replace binges with healthy relationships, activities, and passions. In early 2008, the desire to build a community for those with binge eating disorder became one such passion. I discovered through the available literature that binge eating disorder represents the greatest number of individuals with an eating disorder. In fact, one in every 35 U.S. adults is affected, and 70% of those with the disorder can be considered overweight or obese. It was clear to me that recognition within both the eating disorder and obesity communities was paramount to increasing general awareness and therefore help and hope for the millions affected by binge eating disorder. I began working on the idea that was planted all those years ago when I received my own diagnosis and the Binge Eating Disorder Association was born. Two years later, BETA is a rapidly growing national organization with a membership consisting of both treatment providers and affected individuals and their families. We host a yearly conference and are planning educational programming that will serve to inform the healthcare community, educators, parents, and policymakers. Most importantly, BETA serves as a voice for those who currently suffer in silence and a resource for those seeking their own path to recovery. I trust that my own experience will re reflect the hope that is possible for all of those with, who struggle with eating disorders as we are a resilient and determined bunch. With access to treatment, additional research, and education, many more stories of recovery are possible. I am grateful every day for my own journey and look forward to continuing to bring binge eating disorder into the light.